In 2013, it is estimated that among U.S. women, there will be 232,340 new cases of invasive breast cancer. Breast cancer is the most common cancer among American women other than skin cancer. There are different types of preventative detection of breast cancer. There are mammograms, self-examinations, genetic testing, and like in the case of Angelina Jolie, elective mastectomies. Another common way to detect breast cancer is through a technique known as thermography. Dr. Sherry Tenpenny is board certified in both holistic and integrative medicine and osteopathic structural medicine. Her articles have been translated into seven languages and have been published on popular internet sites such as newswithviews.com, naturalnews.com, and the Huffington Post. In addition to speaking around the world on natural health topics, she has lectured at Cleveland State University and Case Western Reserve Medical School. Dr. Tenpenny opened Tenpenny Integrative Medical Center in Cleveland, Ohio in 1996, where a wide variety of natural solutions for chronic conditions and prevention are offered, including non-invasive infrared breast imaging, more commonly referred to as breast thermography. Dr. Tenpenny, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Dr. Tenpenny, what do you think about this national awareness on breast cancer? I've always thought that that was the wrong type of focus. I don't think that we should be focusing women's attention or businesses or anyone else's attention on breast cancer. It would make so much more sense if we would focus on breast health and what we could do to keep our breasts healthy and to avoid getting cancer in the first place. Absolutely. What is the difference between a mammogram and breast thermography? Breast thermography is infrared breast imaging. It is a way that you can use a non-invasive, no compression, no radiation a scan of the breasts. They look at both breasts bilaterally, and what they're looking for is asymmetrical heat patterns. So it is a preventive test. It looks for the status of the, of the uh, health in your breast as opposed to what mammograms do, which are trying to identify disease. Thermography is one of the earliest changes that you can possibly see that things are occurring in the breast health because if you have an abnormal cell that's starting to grow, it requires more circulation. As the circulation grows into that abnormal area, there's more blood flow. When there's more blood flow, there's more heat. In fact, some of the earliest studies that were done with breast thermography were done in the 1990s. They were very large studies that involved anywhere between 30,000 and 60,000 women, and they showed that it was the earliest signals of something maybe developing or evolving inside of the breast tissue when those thermography patterns started to change. Unfortunately, that entire body of research and information was thrown underneath the bus in exchange for mammograms. And it's unfortunate because thermography identifies and assesses the status of health in your breasts, hmm. where mammograms are there to identify whether or not you have disease. Why, Dr. Tempany, why have the standards for starting breast mammograms changed back and forth between a baseline starting at 50 years old versus 40 years old? Mammography in the U.S. and worldwide always started at the age of 50 when women, when the ma vast majority of women had reached menopause. The reason for that is that prior to menopause, that period of time between 40 years of age and 50 years of age, women are still having menstrual cycles and that estrogenic stimulation to the breast tissue increases the risk of damage being caused by radiation to the breast during mammography. We drop that age from 50 down to 40, because 50 years of age has always been the international status, we dropped that back to, the, to 40 about 15, maybe 20 years ago, because there were a lot of women who were developing breast cancer in their 40s, and the breast cancer industry really wanted to identify area, women in their 40s at an earlier state in order to treat them earlier. The problem is, in my opinion, is that as we did that, those women had breast tissue that was much more sensitive to the effect of the radiation, and inadvertently, we may have been causing more breast cancer by uh, radiation stimulation. So now the standards have gone back to 50 years of age, which I think offers a, a perfect opportunity to, for breast thermography to come into the forefront and to assess women's risk factors 
and to the status of their breast health in that time frame between the ages of 40 and 50. Mm -hmm. When they find an abnormality on the thermogram, that they can change their lifestyle, change nutrition, take breast health supplements, and actually do things to make their breasts healthier to hopefully um, delay or avoid completely the progression from an abnormal thermogram into a full-blown cancer. Doctor, can you tell us more about what breast thermography is and, and why haven't more people heard about it? Breast thermography is infrared imaging. It uses a small camera that just looks at the breast tissue for patterns of heat and asymmetry, that there may be a very large pattern on one breast but not on the other. Thermograms are scored on a scale of one to five, with one and two being normal, three being equivocal, maybe there's something there, maybe not. Four and five are considered to be high risk, but that does not mean that it's diagnostic for cancer. Thermograms were never meant to be standalone assessments. They, the FDA approval for breast thermography, which was done in 1982, approved this tool as an adjunct to mammography to assess a different type of concern that may be evolving in the breast tissue. Whenever a pathology or a disease state starts inside of a human body, it starts with changes inside of the physiology, that things just aren't working very well. As that goes on, if we don't do things to heal it and change it, as that pathology evolves, it eventually gets to the place where conventional medical tools as we know them can identify a cancer or a lump or something in the breast. So these very early changes in the physiology are where the value of thermography is. Most people haven't heard about it because it's generally not covered by insurance. And conventional docs really don't understand nutrition, lifestyle changes, and supplements to help breast heal. So therefore, if they, if they did a thermogram and they found an abnormal one or one that showed high risk, they wouldn't know how to appropriately advise women how to change their breast health and to restore health to their breast tissue, they would just say that it was a false positive, it was a waste of their money, and that they um, shouldn't even pay attention to these breast thermograms, even though they showed in many studies back to the 90s, if you had an abnormal thermogram and did absolutely nothing to try to identify it, 60% of those women over a 10 period of time definitely went on to develop breast cancer. Dr. Tempenny, you mentioned that the FDA did approve thermography. Why do you think conventional doctors still disregard breast thermography now? In 1982, breast thermography was approved as an additional tool to assess the level of health or disease within a breast tissue. It was being used at that period of time to, uh, to screen women for possibilities that they had issues that were happening within their breasts. However, it never really came into a standardization with which the insurance industry began covering it. So as we know, most things that are not covered by insurance are not used in conventional doctor's offices. So unfortunately, the very large body of information, science and research that was done all the way through the 90s was actually disregarded by conventional medicine. And therefore, the tool is unfortunately not used. Dr. Tempenny, is a thermogram a standalone test for breast health assessments? Thermograms are a standalone test for breast health, but they should never be a standalone test if you're trying to identify disease. It really is a function of your physiology, and it is meant to be used in association with mammograms. However, in my opinion, I believe that mammograms should be used as a diagnostic tool. When you get your mammogram report back from your doctor, it will say right across the bottom of that report that mammograms have as high as a 25% false negative rate, which means that you may very well have cancer, but that, the therm but that the mammogram has not been able to identify it. That's what a false negative rate is. For thermography, historically, over the hundreds of thousands of thermograms that have been done in the last 25 years, there's less than a 3% false negative rate, meaning that if you have an abnormality there and it is cancer, it will be identified 97% of the time, where mammograms will only identify it 75% of the time. Even with those types of statistics, I think it's very important for women to use both tools. 
However, if you have a thermogram and consistently year after year after year, you are scored in a uh, TH1 or a TH2 level, which is the lowest positive possible score, I don't necessarily think that it's, it's important to get a mammogram every single year, perhaps every five to seven years, as long as you're consistently getting a thermogram and a very highly educated uh, breast exam by someone who's been highly trained. Are there foods or supplements that are more important for breast health? There, there really are. One of the main supplements for breast health is iodine. And we can get iodine from eggs, particularly egg yolks. We can get it from seaweeds and sea vegetables and kelp because it's been known since the 1960s that areas of, of iodine deficiency inside of the breast tissue are areas that frequently coincide with the development of breast cancer, particularly in the ducts. So iodine is really important for breast health. In fact, it requires about 150 micrograms a day to keep your thyroid healthy with iodine, and it requires about 3,000 milligrams a day to saturate the breast tissue and to keep your breasts healthy using iodine. Dr. Tenpenny, will you tell us a little bit more about Tenpenny Integrative Medical Center? Tenpenny Integrative Medical Center is located in Cleveland, Ohio. We've been here since 1996, and I'm always proud to say that we've had people that have come from nearly every state and more than 14 countries to get well and to get off of their pharmaceutical drugs. We focus on women's health and breast health. We do allergy elimination types of programs that can get people so that their sensitivities to allergies can go nearly completely away, and in many cases, 100% away. We have osteopathic physicians, chiropractors, and acupuncturists, so we do a very large pain program in our practice. And we are very happy to have all of these different people come from all over the world to join us to get well and celebrate their health. Dr. Tenpenny, can you tell us more about why you've become so passionate about thermography? I've become very passionate about this since we've been using it in our center for, since 1996. I, once I started looking at the background information and I looked at the historical backdrop and all of the research and science that was done and continues to be done this day, it made me very sad to think that this was a tool that could identify much earlier the condition of, of health or dis-ease in a woman's breast and offer them a window of opportunity to get healthy and to restore the health to their tissues before they proceeded on to having cancer. We've had many women in our clinic here in Cleveland, Ohio, that when they would get a thermogram, it would be a level four or five, which would be identified as high risk. We would then appropriately order a mammogram. The mammogram would be negative, but we knew that they had a high risk condition in their breast tissue. And by offering them supplements that were good for their breast tissue, offering, uh, helping them to lose weight, change their lifestyle, get off of um, a synthetic hormone drugs like birth control pills or Premarin or things that were synthetic, um, changing their lifestyle, doing all sorts of different things that would contribute to breast health. We saw those scores drop from four and fives down to twos and even in some cases ones, which is a very great philosophy to say that even though the, your tissues are having a high risk area of potentially developing cancer, there are ways to turn back the time and restore your body to health. We think about that many times like um, if we've had the flu or a cold, we expect our bodies to recover, or if we've had diarrhea or if we've had some other conditions, infectious diseases, but frequently conventional doctors don't appreciate the fact that there are many other types of conditions that once we are headed down the road towards disease that by lifestyle, supplements, dietary changes, changes of your emotional conditions, changing your thoughts, you can restore your body to health. So it makes me very passionate to deliver this out to women to say there are options, there are ways that you can appreciate your breath, breast health and restore your health rather than just progressing unbeknownst to you on the disease. You know, Angie, there are times, I'm sure there are many women who are listening to this, who they have known people in their family or many of their friends that have gotten their annual mammograms every single year mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they have cancer in their next year that they get a mammogram. Well over that seven to eight year period of time that condition has been evolving and could have been identified on thermography and could have been interceded upon. 
However, we wait each year. We think that we go and we get a mammogram and now we've got this normal thing and we think it's uh, completely okay and we have no pathology evolving in our breast tissue. And then next year we end up with cancer. That cancer did not develop in the last 365 days since your last mammogram. That has been evolving over a multiple year period of time. So that's why it's been stated in the literature that thermograms can identify areas of concern in the breast five to seven years before it can be identified on a mammogram, giving a window of opportunity to work towards uh, restoring health rather than just waiting for that next year's mammogram that could identify your disease. Absolutely important information for every woman to know. I mean, to understand that you could be preventing this five to seven years before finding out a terrible outcome. Dr. Tempany, where can we find places that offer thermography? Most places across the country are the thermograms are offered by integrative medical physicians. These are physicians who are trained to be conventional doctors, and then they've expanded their armamentarium of tools into their practice to include many other things that are not normally offered by conventional medicine. Integrative medicine p practitioners can be found on various websites in the internet. Um, I would recommend ACAM, which is the American College for Advancement of Medicine, IFM, which is the Institute for Functional Medicine, ISIM, which is I-C-I-M, which is the International College of Integrative Medicine. Those are some very important websites that your listeners need to know about that you can go out to the internet and when you get to their websites, when you get to those sites, they have practitioner locators in them, which means you can put in your zip code and within 25 or 50 miles of where you live, you can identify by an integrative medicine doctor who probably has a thermography unit in his office. And if he doesn't, he or she doesn't, she could probably direct you to someone that's in your local vicinity where you can have this test done for yourself. That was Dr. Sherry Tenpenny. Stay tuned to WHDT World News. We still have the rest of today's headlines and a full report on the weather. We'll be right back.